Audio testing, one, two, three, lights on, camera rolling, and action. Welcome to the Scaling Creator Podcast, the one-stop shop that explores problems, solutions, and stories for business-minded creators. I'm Soren Dickens. And I'm Erickson Dickens. We'll be talking about everything from self-discovery, storytelling, leadership, marketing, sales, operations, and finance. If you like a healthy dose of education mixed with a generous dash of insightful entertainment, prepare for your ears to be pleasured. Mm. Oh, yeah. Make sure to check us out at scalingcreator.com and also join our free Discord community. Scaling Creator launching in three, two, one. The following content is not intended for all listeners, but we strongly encourage all listeners to listen regardless. All right, so today we have Thor Arsand on the Scaling Creator podcast. And throughout all of my travels, Thor might be one of the most interesting people I've ever met. He's a social media expert, content creator, truly the definition of a scaling creator. Thor Thanks for coming on. Appreciate being here, Soren. I've been looking forward to this. This is going to be a, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. So since the last time I've seen you, a lot has changed in terms of like focus. A lot's been going on in the world. One thing that really draws me to you and your content is your mindset and the way that you navigate the world, especially during these like chaotic times. Can you just give me a quick rundown of where your headspace has been since 2020 when we last saw each other? 2021, I think it was. Yeah, it was in... Yeah, it was like no October ish, twenty twenty one. Bro, a lot has changed. I feel like I've like mentally aged five to ten years in the last like two years. Yeah, and I, 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 we were talking about this. I did a post on my Instagram as well, kind of reflecting on twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two, because those were my like the most difficult years that I've ever gone through. Also, the most exciting years, the most beautiful years, the most exhilarating years, but again, the most painful years. Just countless ego deaths, like just countless things that have completely thrown me off and forced me to connect way more with myself, spend more time with myself, connect deeper with my purpose, really figuring out who I am. Like it's been, yeah, a, a very, very rapid journey of self-reflection and insight insight like I've gained so much insight into myself and it's interesting because I remember uh this is probably like six seven months ago eight months ago um and even a year ago and and two years ago I remember thinking like damn like where did my confidence grow like I feel like I lost my confidence and I was reflecting back on when I first started online seven years ago eight years ago building my business I remember being so much more confident than I am now and again this is like 2021 I'm like damn what the happened to my confidence and it's interesting because like at that time I was sort of in a way being broken down and just like really challenged by the universe and by God mother nature by everything by myself but coming out of that which is kind of like the last three months I've been in Norway just spending the winter here is really landing and grounding and kind of digesting and integrating all of these experiences and things that have happened over the last like year two years and I'm just like damn now it makes sense and and i'm so excited about life now i'm so con- like i don't even understand it but like my confidence right now is just hard like i feel like my confidence right now is it's overpowered like it makes no sense like how am i this confident i feel like nothing can budge me and i'm hopping on calls now with like clients who i used to be scared to talk to multi-millionaires billionaires doing content shoots with them talking and i'm like i'm sitting here like ballsy cracking sexy like sexual edgy jokes almost with like i cracked that with one of our clients who he's i think he's he will be a billionaire in like five years he's laughing and his team is laughing and i'm just like damn bro how did how did this happen to sum it up it's just been a lot of internal voyaging just learning a lot and going very very deep into myself a lot of plant medicine a lot of ceremony there it's been and very powerful, very profound, very life-changing. Was there a moment that everything clicked and you knew that you needed to prioritize your focus or was it like constant reoccurring reminders that pushed you towards this the spiritual and personal development? What was it for you? Because I know some people have those like stark moments where everything just snaps and they go black for, you know, a couple weeks and then they come up and they start this journey. What's that journey development been like for you? So interesting, bro. It's been more like death by a thousand cuts in terms of my ego. It's just been like slowly. And I I reflected on this yesterday, actually. Well, when I first started in business, it took me a year before I didn't have any success. I pushed through and I worked like 1,500 hours, four hours every day for a year straight. And I made $22. But then after that, I switched to Instagram and YouTube. I kind of had very quick success. I made $1,000 a month. Then four months after I was at $10,000 a month. But then I capped at like $10,000 a month and I dropped 
dropped would drop between like 5k 3k 4k 7k per month for like three years after that i think the way sort of god's laid out my plan is to first of all test me and see if i'm really about this game and i was and then show me that give me success so that i prove to myself like yes this is what i'm meant to do with my life and then just make it really f difficult because my ego had to die bro i was an asshole before like i was a big big and so I understand now why it's been so slow for me getting the monetary success is because my ego has had to die so many f times because I honestly would have been scared if I had the influence and mindset and income that I have now four years ago. I would not use that for good. But now I'm so rooted in love and compassion and mission to serve that it makes sense. I'm like, ah, that's why it took so long. I had to become a person worthy of having this level of influence and impact. So yeah, it's been slow and gradual. Who were you four years ago? You were in high school, right? Four years ago or close to coming to the end of high school. Can you talk a little bit about who you were at that point in your life? Because I really feel like diving into that, you were innovative, you're creative. There are a lot of young individuals right now who are probably in that position who might be looking for that monetary success, but they might be putting the cart before the horse here, right? They might be looking for that success before they find success within themselves. Tell us a little bit about who you were when you ended up dropping out of high school and kind of just going like on your own way, right? I think it's a great motivation to start off with just wanting to make more money. And that was my motivation as well. The fastest way to grow as a person is through entre entrepreneurship because everything you do, it will always come back to you. Your business is a reflection of you. Everything in your life and how you show up, it, it's all just a byproduct product of how you are internally, that's going to reflect your external success. Now, I was a d but not like I went out of my way to just be an asshole. I was just really passionate, really hungry, really, really driven to succeed at whatever I did. But my motivation sometimes to succeed at, for example, trampolining or suck or death diving, like it's diving, but you kind of land on your belly flop. It's like an European Norwegian sort of sport. Literally like anything I've done, I've always needed to be the best. And I was the best at like, like I'm really, really versatile. I'm really good at very many things. And it's because when I was a kid, I wouldn't accept myself if I wasn't good, like the best at everything. So that's also like what fueled my drive to really like push in the beginning of my entrepreneurship journey because my best friend was also doing this and I couldn't let him beat me. I couldn't let him make more money than me, but he did. And it was so shattering for my ego so many times. Like every time I would see him, I would my heart would sink when he said to me that he'd made a sale online. It was so toxic, like such a toxic way to be. But I was just, I guess, a kid that wanted to, like, I wanted validation. I wanted people to, like, validate me and say that I was good enough. So that's really where it came from, just insecurity and wanting to be perceived as someone worthy. Now that you've been through that experience, do you feel like you can identify those type of dynamics now really easily in terms of maybe you meet someone and you, you can still, you can sense that toxic ego in that they don't really want your success. They just want to know that they're better than you. Do you ever feel like you run into that? How do you navigate that now with the, the mindset and the spiritual approach you have now? That's interesting. I mean, I brought you on here to ask you interesting questions because I know we could get real deep, solve some big problems here, man. <laughs> I don't feel like I meet too many people nowadays that have a massive ego because that's not who I am anymore. So I don't tend to attract that. But when I do come across it, which is typically if I like lean summer, a lot of people that I used to study with, with in high school, for example, will come back to Stavanger um, and there will be like a party or like a gathering and, and I'll go and I'll meet people that I used to go to school with. Like that's when that typically happens. How I navigate it, honestly, bro, like they all perceive me as the old version of me. They all perceive me as an asshole. And I don't really like I don't need them to know who I am now. Me trying to explain that would never work anyways. So it's just like accepting it for what it is. And I just try to have fun with it, bro. Like I think um, like one of my biggest things in life is like, I just want to have fun no matter what the I do, because when I have fun, bro, things are lit and I show up as the most powerful version of myself and people love it and people gravitate towards it. Whatever I do, like if I'm in situations like that, people take the piss or people are, are kind of being the whatever. I just have fun with it. And sometimes I'll just entertain the reality that I'm a piece of 
and I'm I'm scamming people online. Whatever, because people think that still, and, and the people I went to high school with, I don't take things too serious. I don't know. But I'm I'm kind of free flowing here. I'm not exactly sure how to answer that question because it's a tricky one. But yeah, absolutely. I think that to your point though, you're not in the game anymore of even attracting people like that, right? You you only attract the people who are on your wavelength. That, that's the, the best way to explain it, right? You're not really attracting those type of people, at least in your business life or your personal life. Maybe in your past personal life, you still run into those types of people. But tell me a little bit about how you take that approach as an online creator, as someone who has to you know, build relationships online. How do you, you know, project your messaging, put yourself out there so that you only attract the people who really resonate with you and also align with you, your frequency? Bro, it's this is this is like I love talking about this. Sh- this is one of my unique edges and I think it's so overpowered and it's so underused. And it's it's literally like like I could say a couple of words but like vibes. Like people love vibes. And what's a vibey guy? Well, it's a guy that expresses himself. Self-expression. Self-expression is the most overpowered networking tool because you're not trying like it's not like you're trying to maintain a connection anymore people just consistently want to be in your space because your energy is fun and it's dope and bro that's the one thing that i've learned being around millionaires being around multi multi millionaires like people that i would normally my pants being around like all of these people it seems like they love my energy they love being around me why is that well because i'm so shameless in how i act i'm just so raw and real and authentic and fun and playful like i went to this retreat in december with a lot of very very high level people i remember the first day in the evening i was like damn i don't deserve being here i'm not at these people's level i like imposter syndrome mad imposter syndrome by the end of that retreat bro i felt like i dominated the space i pull up with like cigarettes and i was like rolling this cigarette tobacco in Mexico because they have this amazing tobacco and I like kind of smoking it when I'm there. And by the end of the trip, bro, this is like a conscious, very conscious, super spiritual, super healthy people. By the end of it, I was like buying packs of tobacco for like 10 people there. And so I was like, damn, my influence is like, I'm, I'm really influential even without knowing it. And it's all coming back to just my energy and how I show up and how I be. At the end of the day, when, when you are in your own power and you are expressing yourself authentically, that's rare because most people have a mask most people are scared of showing themselves and in this space there's so much inauthenticity there's so much fakeness but when you see a guy just like dancing and being weird and doing a fucking side flip because he feels like doing a side flip like yo that's that's my guy like that's a fun person to be around because it's just pure and it's childlike especially very rich people i've learned that they really enjoy being around creative people because for them it's a breath of fresh air because a lot of very wealthy people who aren't creative or more like business business like sharks those type of people they don't have a lot of sort of that creative flow and energy in their life And when they come across someone that has that in the workspace, it's like, ah, nice. Okay, we're having fun on this call. We did a little dance, like we're vibing. That's the that's the vibe. And so very powerful, very powerful. And I love business now because I'm not trying anymore. I'm just being, just being me. That's awesome. Where did that come from, man? Like, I know you talk about doing a lot of shadow work. You talk about like seeking the inner child. Where did Thor the Viking, the Norse god of YouTube and Instagram, where did it come from? I've always been very expressive, like as a kid. I've always done a lot of different things. I've always been very passionate about like a million different things. So I think one aspect of it comes from me just, I've done so many things. I've done so many, many different things that I've learned a lot about myself and like what makes me tick. So I understand if I snowboard, for example, every weekend, like my work week after I snowboard is productivity is increased because I feel like I've tapped into a deeper sense of purpose in life. When I come home from snowboarding, I feel like I've conquered the mountain and it gives me a sense of confidence and just inner peace and it's beautiful. I guess biggest thing you can do to to increase your confidence is being seen and seeing yourself and your vulnerabilities, like really facing your shadow. When you have someone who isn't confident, it's because they haven't looked at the darkness within themselves. They haven't looked at their insecurities and become okay or surrendered or grown through their insecurities. You can't be confident if your foundation of who you are is unsturdy and you're you're unsure of who you are and how to act in certain situations. So really what it all comes down to is just being radically honest with yourself. Like if you feel like a piece of because you live with your mom, whatever it might be, or you just, you masturbate every day, or you just haven't achieved anything and you're like 32. Awesome. 
That's dope. At least you're being honest with yourself because now you have a clear foundation to start off. For me, it's it's not really been something that I've chosen because this is not something that you kind of actively choose unless you're a savage who just n knows how to live life. But like, this is really how I believe you're supposed to live life. You're supposed to experience, grow through experience, have deaths of your ego, which forces you to connect even more with yourself and who you actually are and rebuild on that foundation and then do that again. And then again, and again, and the more times your, your ego dies, the more times you basically just get shattered and rebuild, the stronger you are, the stronger you become. I've gone through so many of those experiences that, yeah, I'm just very sturdy now, I'm just very grounded now because of all of that time being in discomfort. And honestly, bro, like one key piece that has helped me skyrocket and significantly accelerate my growth and my confidence um, and just this whole process has been plant medicine, mushrooms. Like I've had some of the most disgustingly dark, kind of traumatizing, but like things that probably could make somebody kill themselves whilst they're in the experience. Like I've gone through multiple of those, but you don't do that just for fun. Like when I do those things, I do them with a very strong intention. And I know I might end up in a hell loop and live that for four hours on repeat. I know pain that you experience and death you experience is, is just insane. But like that also does something to you. Like you can't come out of that not feeling, well, you don't feel good the, when you come out or the day after or even a week after but like once you give it a month to like really digest you're like i went to hell bro and i came back that's insane i'm a beast do you have an experience that you'd be open to talking about in terms of the headspace that you took into the experience what ended up happening during you know i would the, i have i have one experience trip. yeah i love to talk about yeah. actually I've, i'm curious have you done anything like any plant medicine yourself yeah i have and i've i've experienced exactly what you're talking about the trip that i had we have a mushroom in norway which only grows in like north of scandinavia and i don't know if it even grows in, in finland it doesn't grow in finland it actually only grows in norway i think and like maybe maybe some other places on earth but it's it requires a very specific terrain it's called liberty cap and it's it's one of the most most potent uh, psychedelic mushrooms and um i actually have can i even say this yeah i still I, I still possess some uh but right now i might be anywhere in the world so you never know <laughs> i did seven grams of, of liberty cap in a cabin in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the mountains all alone at midnight and there was a raging storm outside i put blindfolds on and so it's like the most intense way to do it and like seven grams but that was it was ridiculous yeah. Is, that's a lot like three grams is like a, a full send five grams is a heroic dose um and the, the 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 potency as well is exponential so like one gram is not two grams is not twice as one gram it's like three times as one gram ended up basically just going to hell and living uh different like loops of hell like lucifer um on netflix has a interesting way of like explaining what hell looks like when lucifer goes to hell it was kind of like that but the amount of pain like i experienced like literally every single kind of pain that you can imagine psychological mental physical emotional like nausea like all of the kinds of pain you can imagine take a little bit of each and just put them in one little like cocktail of pain and then that was what i was experiencing it was absolutely insane the visions i had of death and destruction and there's a lot of like karmic stuff from my ancestry that came up like from the viking times viking ages we did a lot of dark and so i was kind of reliving being a viking like burning the kids of my neighbor because he stole my milk so, and then he burns my mother and my daughter and my wife and shit. And then it's just like on repeat, just like constantly killing and then dying. And it was really, really dark, bro. But at the same time, and it's it's very like some people now might think, oh, he had a bad trip. I would not consider that a bad trip because I fully embraced everything about it. When you reject the trip and try to like not feel those emotions and, and those things that are coming up, that's when it's a bad trip. But if you fully embrace it, that's the important thing. That's what you got to do. And I was all in. I was fully embracing it. And it was so insane um but like coming out of that bro it, it just i can't even like articulate it very effectively because like it did so much but like just a level of gratitude first of all you have for this reality incredible 
I'd also like just the gratitude I had for my body, for my family, for for where I am in life, and also for the mission. Just it felt a, a deep sense of of connection with my mission. Because what I what I experienced for the first time doing that was healing my ancestral trauma. I've met a lot of people who have gone through insane life experiences, like trying suicide, almost dying of overdose, like losing their parents, losing their mom, having their brothers shot, like in front of them. Crazy life stories. I don't have any of that. I grew up on a cushy cloud. I had every toy I ever wanted. We had a boat. We had a cabin. We had two cars and we had a massive house. Not rich, but upper class, wealthy, mid upper, upper middle class in Norway. So I don't have a lot of trauma like that. My childhood was smooth. I've been able to kind of like work through. And since I've started my journey on spiritual growth as well, so early, there hasn't been a lot of things that I need to like kind of work through to find myself. Like my path of kind of finding my passion and, and my purpose in life has been very fast. Like I know why I'm here on earth. I'm 24. And I've realized that very early in my life because I haven't had a lot of trauma to work through. What I realized when I was on mushroom is like, damn, I don't really like most people cry and purge because like purge out their own trauma. I was purging out my ancestors trauma. I was purging my mom's trauma. I was crying and feeling my mom's pain and how what the, the that's happened in her life that she's never healed and my dad and my grandparents and I realized that damn that's a big piece of my mission healing my ancestry healing my my generational trauma so that when my lineage continues it kind of stops with me it's one of the one of the one of the key lessons from from that experience and it really really rooted and grounded me and like damn I'm here for a reason like that's what mushrooms can a lot of times do is really help you understand why you are here and what you're here to do and what you actually enjoy what makes you tick but treat them with respect. Very important. What are some of those discoveries that you've come across through the process of the self-discovery journey in terms of who are you? What are you here to do? What do you enjoy doing? And who do you enjoy doing those things with? Because I know you're well-traveled. You've been around a lot of different cultures. You know who you want to be around. What have you discovered? Bro, I've discovered that I'm here to experience everything. Like I'm here to experience the most torturous pain and the most incredible highs. That's another thing that I've kind of realized over this journey. Like, man, my pain tolerance is really high. Like I can go through a lot of pain and still be sane, still here. I'm still showing up it, just even in the gym. Like when I'm done with a set in the gym, like I can not talk for at least 10 seconds and I'm just like dying inside because it's so painful, but it's also so addictive and amazing. I can't like let the set go before I've just annihilated myself. And everybody's like looking like, what the f is this guy doing? But that's how I train. That's how I how I do a lot of things. And Garen Jones, uh, who I met at a retreat last year in December, said this. It really impacted me. The further into darkness and pain you dare to step, the further into the light you'll be able to thread. And that's true. A lot of people have really boring lives because they're very uncomfortable exploring pain and so there's not a lot of pleasure accessible to them because they're so afraid of stepping outside the comfort zone the more you step outside the comfort zone the more pleasure and beauty is available to you like a tree that has its limbs stretching into heaven also has its roots stretching down to hell and i think that's the best way to describe what it means to live an incredibly epic life. You have to be willing to explore the darkness. You have to be willing to go into those extremely painful, dark parts of yourself because that is the key. That is unlocking the most beautiful parts of yourself. That is unlocking your true potential. Like you can't become your fullest version of yourself if you ignore the darkness that is inside of you. We all have that darkness. There's a, there's a psychotic killer inside of all of us. Most people run away from that. And then that darkness dictates their life and they're unconscious of it. But if you go head on and you face that, that's really what's gonna create a life of beauty. That's like one of the things that's been most present for me. Obviously outside of that, um, traveling has just helped me expand upon my mind and it's like this is sort of how far I've gotten into in terms of like my realizations of reality and perspectives of reality but like traveling has really helped me understand the world from a completely different lens when you only stay in one place it's so easy to get boxed in if you don't travel you'll never be able to like fully see what's what's there what's available I feel like the same for you. I mean, you've traveled to many, many different places. I'd be curious to know what's like one of the biggest takeaways that you've had. Like what's one of the biggest things that has come in your life? Re lessons, reflections from traveling, from exploring different cultures, from meeting different people too. From my experience, it's that everyone has 
they have a certain way of living their life and a lot of it ultimately comes from some type of religious structure right and so when you talk about god you talk about the creator and you talk about really experiencing experiencing life in all possible ways right before we talk about that i kind of want to continue going down this rabbit hole a little bit because as a creator as someone who can actually create experiences from from like nothing you you know you walk into a room of people and you can create something with this group of people that has living a similar experience in physical reality. How do you interpret your purpose from like the creator's agenda as a creator? Because there's all of these different religions that this creator, this God, that he has a similar position in their religious hierarchy, but also there are different interpretations across other cultures. So from your experience and the way that you live your life now, how does God play a role in your life and how do you play a role in his greater agenda? That is a very good question. I I grew up in like kind of church, kind of not church. Most people in Norway are like on paper Christian. I'm on paper Christian. I'm baptized. I grew to despise the church when I was young because it was just so much it was boring. It's like it didn't make any sense. What the f are you talking about? The devil, Jesus going down to hell and grabbing a physical key and unlocking a little box. And then now the he devil is locked and like, bro, what the f is this like there that really frustrated me and so for the longest time i was very anti-religion anti-spirituality i can say that i've i found god i found my understanding of what god is and for me he's he's always present he's always here and he's always working through me and the more i can surrender to him and this greater mission the more magic happens in my life and this is something that's become very present okay what does it mean to like surrender to to that to me that means judging myself less like i'll be honest this last week my sleep has been absolutely f like i've been getting up between 12 and 4 p.m you know that's crazy <laughs> that's weird of course i've been working like in the evenings but m before back in the day i would really judge myself with that and if i got up at 3 p.m the whole day would be horrible but now that happens, but I'm just like, oh, shit. but it's able to like understand that this is happening for a reason, even though I'm in the midst of the show. I'm very confident in chaos now because I understand the meaning of the chaos. I understand the purpose of it. That's really what God has, has given me in my life. And, and what's what's happened when God has come into my life is like, damn, I can be present and, and content and surrendered in chaos when things are difficult, when I don't understand why the fuck I missed this client call. This is horrible. Like I should have been on that client call. I missed the client call. Why? There's a purpose. There's a reason. And the more I surrender to that, the more magic happens, bro. I feel like I'm just manifesting business deals nowadays. Like this, it feels so effortless to me doing business. I'm, I'm not even trying. I'm just being. I'm just being me because I understand that being me and the fullest expression of me is the fastest way to grow the business because there's that's what I'm meant to do. That's that's what I'm here to do. I can't be anything that I'm not. So there's no need for me to try. In terms of me sort of serving God's mission, it's it's very much through the company and it's through the company values and it's it's through staying in integrity and through being in service. Like my commitment to service for our clients is it's like 100%. If I'm not confident we can get amazing results for the client, we will not close them. Even though it would make good money and it would probably be fine, we, I don't want to close them because my most important thing is I want our clients to be happy and they're like family now. Like the, the vibe we have in the company, like I'll send selfies in the Slack channel. I'll tell our clients like, oh, I want to hug you. This is good vibes. We're laughing on the call. We're vibing. Like that's the energy and that's what's happened in my life. I, when I surrender more and try to control less, I've always been a control freak and trying to control everything has been the biggest source of my pain in my life. Now that I'm just more surrendered and just like, okay, that didn't happen as I hoped it would, but I trust that that happened for a reason. Everything is so beautiful, bro. Everything is just, yeah, amazing. If I end up scrolling or masturbating, whatever, and like I preach on Instagram that you shouldn't scroll all the time and here I am fucking, I scroll on TikTok for an hour like, no need to judge myself for it. That's only making it worse. So surrendering to where the flow takes me. That's how I would explain my relationship with God actually is just flowing and surrendering to the flow, surrendering to the way of life and not trying to judge how things are and how things are going, trying to control things, but just surrendering and trusting that everything is happening exactly how it's supposed to and showing up in integrity being 100% of myself all the time, wherever I am, that's when I feel the closest to God. It's when I'm just me. When I'm not trying, no mask, I'm just being, I'm just being me. That's when I channel God. And also like as a creative, as a creator, as a content creator, my work, when I'm just surrendered, 
and trusting, oh, the downloads just come. I, I don't even try anymore. I just, I just know that I'm going to figure this shit out and boom, 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 boom. I know. Oh, boom. Okay. Done. This client complete finished. It's very, it's very, very powerful, very smart way to work. I would say it's so much fun that way. And you know, this. like when you're in the zone, you're shooting and you're vibing and having fun, like your work is good. Only when you're stressing, you're trying to control it, you're rushing and stressing, worrying about a deadline, like you show up, you're triggered, you're annoyed, nothing works out. It's been a journey, but I'm um, very grateful to, I guess, to have come to this place and like, I, I now understand what it means to like have God in your life. And it is, it's incredible. It's really beautiful. It seems like the journey to, to really find that, especially coming from a, a religious background where you're force fed this certain narrative that really doesn't align with who you are as a, a maturing adult it's really interesting to me because i see this a lot especially with entrepreneurs and creators where they may have grown up in a culture where there are these religious norms and then they start this personal development journey that puts them down this path of creating their own interpretation or aligning with maybe it's aligning with an ancient interpretation or a pre-existing interpretation of spirituality of one's relationship with god of god's you know impact on this physical dimension that we're in it's really interesting to me and talking to creators about that because i think a lot of our creativity and our inspiration a lot of the stories that we heard growing up came from religious texts the ones that were almost like how many stories did you you know hear growing up as a kid that you took as like this is true because a lot of people believe this the only stories i can think of would be stories of like history which we all you know thought history was true and then the 100 percent fact which nowadays we look back we're like yeah well, maybe there's some history that isn't 100 percent truthful and then you look at religious texts and you take it as face value you're like this is 100 percent word for word what the bible says and maybe that's not the way it is but the higher power that is above all of it is a critical piece of our existence here in this dimension so i'm curious and if you have any theories or thoughts yeah, it's Where interesting did... that you say this though, because it's like if you look if you look at most religions, they're all kind of connected. Like they all have very much the same foundation or the same stories or the same explanations of reality. And so I think there's a there's a lot of synergy there. Um, but I also yeah, it's also true that there's been a lot of like, <laughs> and you know, once humanity kind of humans with ego get their hands on something, it is. You know, just it will get diluted. It will get distorted. That's just how we are. That can cap a lot of people if you're very firm in like your religious beliefs. And I have a couple of friends that are that way. And I'm like, damn, like uh, if you only tried a little bit of mushrooms, you would know, you would see, you'd learn. But it's like, no, that's devil's grass. No, I can't touch it. You know, it's uh, <laughs> it's funny though. You've probably spent quite a bit of time in your ancestors' history, right? exploring the Vikings and the way that they interpreted the gods and the way that they lived their lives by their understanding, their limited understanding, because they weren't, they were limited by their boats and by foot travel. So they weren't communicating with people in Asia as often, right? So how have you kind of embodied some of your ancestral, you know, traits or philosophy without keeping that limited mindset because you know if we if we only like accept one culture's view on the world it seems like we we completely capped ourselves so how how have you been able to kind of weave and bob through your travels with that like ancestral knowledge that you do have bro it's my my favorite quote of probably all time it's from avatar the last airbender as iro is trying to teach suko lightning bending teaching him about the different um, elements, the different tribes. He's teaching him about the water tribe and how they're compassionate and loving. The earthbenders, they're grounded, stubborn, and firm. The airbenders, how they're flowy and, and, and playful and light and very spiritual. And the firebenders are passionate, aggressive, and all of that. And he, he tells Suko that if you only take wisdom from one place, it becomes rigid and still. But if you take wisdom from different cultures, different places on earth, it becomes whole. And if you even look at Iroh's firebending, he's got a style of firebending that is also inspired by waterbending. And that's also like the, the, the art of redirecting lightning is, is a waterbending sort of flow. And so 
I've been really obsessed with Avatar lately. It's interesting, like I'm looking through life kind of like from the lens of different benders and elements. But for me as well, like having the, the Viking ancestry and, and all of that, it's not something that I was very connected with when I was younger, but it's something that I've gotten more connected with after Vikings took off. I'm like, damn, like it's my, this is my country. Like there's a whole show about this and the whole world is like gassed about this. And this is in my country. Like, yo, uh, maybe should I, I should explore this more. And as I've been exploring the Vikings, I've gotten very connected with their philosophy and approach to life. And I've always also noticed that this is also inherently kind of how I am. Like the Viking philosophy is very interesting. They were very successful at what they did and they were very versatile. Like they knew a lot of different things. They could craft, they could farm, they could uh, build boats, they could travel. They understood a lot of like, they, they had a lot of different knowledge. And so to me, the Viking philosophy is really about self-expression. Like the Vikings knew how to party, they knew how to f turn up lit, and they also knew how to get serious and how to get f done and how to raid and how to fight, but also how to love and how to farm and how to be compassionate and how to build community. Like they were very versatile people. And so to me, that's the Viking philosophy. And I think there's a lot of beauty and a lot of um, power that can come to, to anyone who adopts that approach to life, because you are not just a business guy. Like you, Soren, you're not just a videographer. You're so much more than that. I'm not just a content creator. I'm a snowboarder. I'm a death diver. I'm a freestyler. I'm a, I'm a vibe guy. I'm a mushroom picker i'm a i'm a wizard like i'm all of these different things and it's once you are able to tap into all of the aspects of you like that's when your superpower arrives that's when you become a beast that's when you become unfuckwithable is when you're grounded in multiple different aspects of you if you only see yourself as a videographer and then you meet someone who's better at you in video videography it's very easy for you to now feel bad because that's how you see yourself. Your whole self-perception and identity is built around videography or bodybuilding. And then some guy's stronger than you. Now you're less worthy because he's stronger. But if you are connected and rooted and grounded and have your self-identity kind of spread around different things that are all an expression of you, which will look different from everybody, now you become a lot more stable and now you're more grounded. And you're also a lot more fun to be around because you're just versatile. Like you know different things and that's that's engaging. Like people express themselves different ways when they have done different things. Let's talk a little bit more about that because I, I struggle with that here in the States. And I think a lot of people who are aspiring to be something in their careers pick an identity. And we could talk about this from a videographer's perspective or even just like a filmmaker or creator's perspective where when you become someone in your career and your whole identity becomes that person. And when you, you know, you, when someone, and it's kind of funny because when I meet someone and the first thing they ask me is like, what do you do for a living? I immediately like want to write them off, right? Why is that? It's because when I meet someone and the first thing they ask, what do you do for a living? They're, they're essentially assessing my value based off of what I do for a living, right? Yeah, yeah. Isn't it weird? Or when do you ever meet someone and say, how do you spend your free time, Thor? or what makes you feel most fulfilled. But the first thing people will ask is, what do you do for a living? And it's just like, I used to you know, kind of align with that. Like, oh, well, let's find out what they do for a living. That's going to be like how I assess their value. And now it's like, I, I can't even ask him that question because I feel guilty because it's like, am I really going to assess this person's value or their contribution to society based off of what they do for a dollar? To your point, it's really interesting to, to like have that perspective knowing like, I'm versatile. I am more than a videographer. I am more than a doctor. I am more than a developer. I am a father or I am a brother or I am a free diver or a freestyler or a death diver. All the things you're talking about. Bro, it's yeah. interesting because like when you do that too, you become better at your main craft. You become better. Why is that? Better. Because when you're more connected to yourself, because take videography though, for example, um, this is probably one of the better ways to paint this picture, but videography is a creative skill. The more you have experienced and done, the more, I guess, venues and places your imagination can go to pull creativity. Like if you've experienced the Mayan culture, you can pull creativity from that. If you experience this thing, you can pull creativity from that, especially as a content creator, because I've done so many things and seen so many different things. I'm like, okay, I want to make a video about challenging your comfort zone. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just not just going to sit and talk to the camera about going outside of your comfort zone. I'm going to do that, but then I'm also going to go to a cliff and I'm going to death dive. And I'm terrified of death diving. I'd hate heights, but I also love doing it because I'm so scared to do it. And then I pair that. 
and now it's a dope video. Now it's me actually doing it whilst at the same time I'm talking about doing it. So that's like one very practical example, but overall you're just more grounded and you just have more like your mind is expanded and when your mind is expanded no matter what you do you will be better at it because you're able to look at it from different angles i think that yeah i feel like that's the best way to ex to explain it but also at the same time it's just something you have to experience for yourself like it's a feeling more than anything that's exactly how i would explain it too it's really taking those different experiences and and channeling it through whatever medium of storytelling that you're working with here perspective experience trauma adversity all of the things working through those and really reflecting on them and most importantly being hyper present in the moment to take it in um, is really important as a creator and that's that's how you connect with people too like if you got this videography client and you do amazing results that's awesome but if he loves being in your presence you bet your ass you're going to get more work and you're going to get paid more. Like one of the unique edges in our company is not that we provide amazing results, but our clients will never leave us. They won't leave us because the energy in our company and our commitment to service and just the vibes are incredible. Like I'll hop on client calls and I, there's, there's this one chick, she's always like, I love talking to you. This is so much fun. And it's just, yes, I'm we're there to create content, because, but because I've done so much, I can also relate to her, which she's done so much. She's traveled there. I've been there. Now we have more to talk about. There's more report being established. I can be more vulnerable. I've gone through my own I work through my own shit. I can relate more to her struggles. It's like you just become a better connector and, and a communicator. I think that's one of one very underrated skill is being able to understand and see and communicate and connect with humans. It's one of the the, the, the the most valuable things nowadays too, because everyone is so disconnected. So if you can be right. the guy that is connected, people will want to be, uh, be around you. How do you work through that storytelling process with your clients making those connections? Because I've noticed, you know, I watch your stories on Instagram. I've kind of in your sphere for a while now, and I, I watch you connect with people and almost like pull their story out of them. Can you talk a little bit about how, you know, your ability to do that has helped you create the results that you create for people as a creator? You're able to create those connections, create those associations, and then create these different content dynamics that really almost help people understand their story based on the experiences they've had. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. I was on a client call today. This is a guy... Like he sold his last business for like tens of millions of dollars. And it's a guy that I've always looked up to because I'm, I'm showing up there and I'm there to lead him. He's there to learn from me and have me direct him through a content session. My mission is to extract gold. So my mission is to really to ask, ask strategic questions and direct him into a place where he can sort of spit out the most value, where I also know this will connect with people. Trying too hard to communicate this message Stop thinking about this is going to be a video on Instagram. Just stop thinking about that this is a content creation session. You're just talking to me. Just tell me this. Relax, take a breath, flow, and, and do it that way. The whole flow is just so much more powerful. So it's like that's one aspect of it, being able to understand and, and see what makes that other person communicate well. I noticed that because we were recording and he wanted to like make the video look good on the, on the audio, it made it worse. So try, try less was kind of, or surrender was kind of the approach. When it comes to like more tactical content creation, one of the things that we do, we're not looking to like put this client in a box of virality. A lot of agencies do this. It's like, this is going viral. So you need to post this on your page. No, 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 no. Instead, we figure out who the client is. We learn about their values, their mission, who they are and their story. And then what we do is we try to take or we take certain aspects of their story and we create that into virality. So that might mean that we're extracting a certain part of their story and then we're taking a trending hook, for example, and matching that or a trending template or a trending audio or matching that with what already is their truth. And then we create the content because now we're creating a virality based off of the foundation is them instead of the foundation being a viral template that you saw on some theme page. And now you're trying to sort of mold the client into that box but that also takes a lot of knowledge and experience in the field like for me it's very easy to like spit out a hook or or when i see something i'm like oh if we pair this with this kind of content like it's going to be super dope it takes time to learn that but it's one of our unique ed edges um and something that i find yeah very fun it's a very fun process
Yeah, it sure seems like it. It's a cool way to extract content from people because you talk about being this guy who's fun and people can come out of their shell around you. So that's really like a, it's a secret weapon in that case or like a superpower to be able to pull out that content and have those conversations with people where they feel like they could be vulnerable and they can really just let it go. Uh-huh. That's a big yeah. piece too as well. Like you being able to create space for people where they feel safe and heard and supported and seen. It's very important. Right. But that is so much for me a byproduct of really going into myself and working on my own shit. Like I, I never really cried, but like the, bro, I cry so much these days. Like I'll see something now and it will just really, really trigger, like trigger me emotionally. And I will let it like, let that cry come out. And so like, I'm, I'm very in tune with my emotions and that makes me also able to tune into other people's emotions and really like just hold that sacred space for clients when they are sharing something vulnerable. That's so valuable and important because a lot of people are very like, just like robotic in their approach. If you're able to like flow and meet them where they are, it changes everything. And it makes, yeah, whatever you're creating a lot more sacred, a lot more beautiful, a lot more special. Yeah, that's really one of the one of the keys to content creation, that vulnerable aspect, really being able to extract those parts of a person's story that they normally wouldn't tell. Because a lot of people are really scared about being vulnerable because they might get judged or people might perceive them some other way. Now, like their image has fallen apart or whatever, like you being able to to hold space for that and, and, and kind of extract that and make it feel totally normal to me has been just like very, very, very powerful. And it's it's allowed us also to get a lot more results for our clients because that content really engages. You know, people people really resonate with vulnerable content. From your experience, what is it that people resonate with most? With that authenticity factor, right? What is it that you find works for the clients that you work with? A lot of the times where they were before they kind of started this path. So like what job did they work in? Where did, how did they grow up? That's always interesting to know. Like a lot of people, how was your, you know, childhood? Like how was your parents? How did your mom and dad inspire you in your journey? What was your experience in school? Did you start entrepreneurship early? Did you do side hustles when you were younger? What has been like your low points? What's been the, the most painful part of your journey? It's been the most incredible part of your journey. Like diving into into those pieces because really at the end of the day, you know, uh, like storytelling should be in everything you do. We're, we're, we're living in a day and age now where connection with others is so rare and the competition on the platforms is so high. The only thing that is unique anymore is really your story. There's no other version of your story. Like it's your story. And so it's being able to weave that into all of your content that will make you unique. And if you go to my Instagram account, like you will never find an Instagram account that looks kind of like my Instagram account because literally every content piece I post, yes, it's inspired by virality, but at the end of the day, it's just an extension of my story. It's just an extension of who I am and who I be. And when you get to that point, yeah, like you, you you've totally separated yourself from your competition. Like you are one of a kind, like Andrew Tate, He's in many ways one of a kind. Iman Gatsi, one of a kind. Hamsa, one of a kind. Jordan Peterson, one of a kind. Jordan, uh, like Joe Rogan, one of a kind. Like there's no copy of them. There's no person, Mr. Beast, one of a kind. There's no people that does anything remotely similar because they have just truly honed in on who they are, their specialty, their truth, their passion, what they are here to do. Yeah, as one of the secret superpowers of any personal brand is stop trying to be everybody else, be you. And yes, that is really uncomfortable, really weird sometimes because you might have to pioneer. You might might have to do something completely new that nobody has done. But if you can get over that fear, success will come. Super inspiring. We've talked about like where you've come from, a lot of the, the personal development, spiritual development that you've come from, which is really channeled into this business now. And you built websites, you did SEO, you did the course creation, you were coaching, consulting. Now you've created this business that is driving insane results for businesses all over big names, big accounts. And I, I like I feel like the only way you really got to where you're at now is through all that personal development and growth because you are your business. Like the relationship you have with your clients are there because they're attracted to you and the development that you've gone through. So can you kind of tell me how that has all created what you're doing now? It's exactly like you said, all of the personal work has become the professional work and the professional work is also the personal work. Like that's what I love 
about business, also the niche that we are carving out in this market. We work with a lot of spiritual clients. We work with a lot of thought leaders who we really want to stand behind, who we believe will make the world a better place. Um, and so the personal work that I'm doing is then inherently connected to the company. And it's inherently connected to the clients that we manifest because the energy and the frequency that we hold within the company is also the same type of client of that frequency that will attach or come to the company. It's funny, our visionary in the company, uh, Leo, we call him the energetic janitor. Like he doesn't do much work that you would like in, in I guess, in the 3D world call work. Like he doesn't really do a lot of calls. He doesn't do like systems or anything like he's just meditating all day, praying and manifesting and, and traveling and connecting with like other people in this spiritual space and doing a lot of energy work and feeling into dynamics and energy dynamics with a potential different clients and, and, and tuning into the frequency and energy in the company. And if there's any disconnections, like he's very tapped in. I think that's one of the new templates of doing business. And this kind of connects with everything. It connects with how you do sales. It connects with your marketing. It connects with your product. Like we are so service driven. We are so rooted in service. It, it doesn't feel like doing business. Like when I'm on sales calls, it doesn't feel like a sales call because my intention is not to sell unless I know this is really going to benefit them. And when I know this is really going to benefit them, I have no issue selling it because it's me being of service. It's me serving God's mission, getting them on this product because I know it will help them scale their income and influence and impact. And also because I have a vision for that person. I don't just see them as a client that pays us maybe for three months and then we part way. Where we've got big plans, we're putting a lot of portions of the company revenue to buying land in Costa Rica and Norway, eventually other places as well. And we want to build, we wouldn't call it retreat centers, but it's like a place where you have everything you would want to exist and have a dope life, like a beehive, a boxing arena, a gym, a podcast studio, a football field, a wood workshop, a garden, like a place where we can have literally everything we want, sort of really bring this and, and host ceremonies or facilitate and have normal people come and bring our clients in there and have them teach and elevate their message and further sort of spread the message of community and connection and love and like a different way to live. Most people are so stuck in this old way of living. And one of our big mission is really to like sort of break that cycle and, and create a new way to live and really, really blast that to the world. And the way that we're going to do that is through our clients. Like our clients is our speaker and we stand behind them we empower them, we support them, we grow their audience, we do their content. That's how we win together. That's epic. Yeah, I'm excited to di dig into the new earth. That's that's fun talking about as well. I'm, I'm with it, man. That's really cool, man. Well, uh, what are some of the things you're looking forward to most the rest of 2023 with your business? Ooh. Good question. We're actually expanding, expanding into B2C. So we want to drop a couple of like, we want to lean into coaching, bro. We can, we can totally dominate that space because one, we're so service driven Two, we're so good at what we do. And that combination is very unprecedented in the coaching space. There's a lot of just, most people just want to monetize and make money. And so that's one thing that we're expanding into, which I'm really excited about. Also a team event. Um, we want to and feeling into an ayahuasca trip with the executive team. That could be very, very spicy. And um, bro, just more like connecting more with people like yourself. Like we haven't spoken in a year and a half. And so it's like also me just building my personal brand. It's something that's been on the back burner for like two years. I've never really built my brand for two years. Now I'm like back into that. That's really exciting to me. It's like going all in on content, pushing out content, having fun with it, connecting with dope people and having more cool conversations, traveling to more places, meeting more people like that. Yeah, that really gasses me up. It's continuing this mission, bro. Like that's really, really what I live for these days. Yes, I'll, I'll enjoy myself a little Netflix episode of, of whatever, but very, very rooted in the mission and wake up with that every single day, go to bed with that every single day. Sweet. Well, thanks for hopping on, man. I really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to the next episode. We'll talk more about your business, what you guys are going to be doing in the coaching sphere. And I want to talk about like the technical side of your business in terms of like how you guys are driving these results. And I think a lot of other creators will find that really interesting. Hell yeah, bro. I'm super gassed and appreciate, appreciate hopping on here today. It's been the fucking bro. And I'm excited for good. the next time. Good, good. All right. See you soon.